It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. It is Wednesday, June the 30th. If you have not entered the drawing for the cookbooks tomorrow, you should go over to the website and sign up for it. Some of you say you can't sign up, and it's a weird thing because it runs through Facebook only. And the way Facebook um, contests work, it, I haven't explained this to everybody, but the way Facebook contests work, Facebook is set up very securely, unlike what a lot of people have heard through the grapevine. And so the way that a Facebook giveaway works, in order for it to be um, fair and honest, Facebook will only let you sign up for the giveaway on the original device that you sign in to Facebook on. So let's say you have a tablet, you have a laptop, you have a desktop, and you have a telephone. That's four devices that you look at Facebook on. The way Facebook works is there's only one of those devices that you can enter that contest from. And the reason they do that is so that for one, you can't enter it four times, and for another, they can truly identify you as being a legit um, uh, person who's entering the contest, not a robot, not somebody that has stolen your identity, but it has to be you. And a lot of people have not been successful on signing up for the contest. Another thing I'm not crazy about, but I mean, this is it, and I've already paid for the service and it wasn't cheap, is when you do the contests, in order for it to generate, um, I have to contact the winner by email. Well, it probably goes in their spam. So two months in a row, I've had one person that never responded to winning the products. And I did everything I knew to do. I posted it on my page. I posted their names on the website. I contacted them through email more than once. But because I don't ask for a telephone number, it only asks for email. That's the only thing I can do. So anyway, hop over there to the website today and sign up for the free cookbook drawing tomorrow if you hadn't done so because tomorrow's the day. Um, and if you didn't get the front part to explain to you why you can't sign up on certain devices, just rewind it. It might have been confusing. I don't know. But all it amounts to is that they're only going to let you enter that contest on the, on the device that you signed in on Facebook in. So like if you've got three devices and you send me a text and you go, but I'm signed in on this device. You could be signed in on it, but you didn't originally Put your password in on that device. It's crazy, I know, but it's how legally they have to do it. Um, Katrina just did it. If you've only got one or two devices, it's much easier because then you're not worried with the fact that you've got all these devices and you don't know which one it goes, it's going to work on. So I tell people all the time, if it didn't work on one, try another one. Uh, and if it don't work at all, there's no way I can do it for you because if it won't even let you do it to make sure you're legit, how in the world could I do it for you? So it's kind of, I mean, it is what it is. Um, I may, if I'm not real successful finding the winner again this month, because I draw two winners, I may look into another service. Uh, that I could use to do it with because I do have another service for contacts um, for mailing out the newsletter and I need to look into that and see if there's any way I can do a giveaway through that service instead of using the Facebook one um, and it's actually not even run by Facebook but it's run through Facebook I know that sounds crazy but everything's kind of complicated um, when you do stuff like that Good morning, Chris is home, so I'm late. He got up right when I was about to turn on the computer. Well, actually I had already turned on the computer and I was about to hit the button and go live and I heard him in there and I thought, I can't go live, I gotta wait on him. So he had to come in here and make his coffee. I gave him something to do and he said, honey, I'm gonna sit here 
and I'm going to drink my coffee and I'm going to do what I like to do. And then maybe I'll do it later. And I said, okay, because what it is is out in that sunroom in the mornings. It is not every morning, but the windows condensate because that room's not well insulated. And I had bought a squeegee, you know, the thing that you wash windows with, and you just pull it down. I had bought one for the doors in the shower. So I said, why don't you take the squeegee and run down all these windows right quick while they're good and wet, it would be super easy. He, he wasn't too excited about that idea. <laughs> oh. Super, super at 60, Darlene, it is not my Facebook page that you sign in on. It's the web, it's actually the website. You can actually click to join in on that through the website. It's probably going to take you to Facebook or something like Facebook, but you don't have to go to Facebook to find it. So just go to coloredvalleycooks.com and look, and it's going to say, click here to sign up. Um, I think I might be crazy. You know what? I might be wrong. I'm wrong. I don't think I have a sign up from the. Let me look. Click here to receive our monthly news. Yeah, our monthly giveaway uh, drawing thing is on the front page of the website. So you can go there um, if you want to. All right. Show and tell today. Y'all are not going to believe this because yesterday I got up and I had gained a half a pound because I had drank coffee the night before and I knew I shouldn't. And it matters because in my coffee, I put in cream and sugar and I am using half sh the sugar. Now I'm using half of monk fruit and a little bit of my liquid creamer. And what I'm doing, instead of drinking two cups of coffee, where I have to put the creamer in twice, I'm drinking, I'm using the same coffee pod and filling up a large cup. And so it's like drinking two cups of coffee because, but it's only one pod in my Keurig because I just add more water. And that way it takes less cream and sugar to make it taste good because it's not as strong. Um, but anyway, I got up this morning. And I weighed 216.5 pounds. I was super excited today. Y'all, that means I've lost total nine and a half pounds. Isn't that amazing? Chris was jealous this morning. He goes, yours must be water weight. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm happy this morning. <laughs> you know what I can tell the most? Y'all know I carry a lot of my weight in my belly. I'm just like my daddy. He does that too. He's got bird legs, but he has a big belly. And I started getting a big belly when I was 180 pounds. I mean, my belly just pokes out like I'm pregnant. Well, last night I, no well, last night I noticed that when I looked down, I know this sounds goofy, but I looked down at my belly when I was changing clothes and I thought, it's not quite as bloated as it used to be. And I think some of that has to do with me eating healthier. I do. Um, and because a lot of people, I, I've been reading in, in my book. This is my book. I'm sharing it with y'all today. And y'all have seen it. It's called Food, Foods That Harm and Foods That Heal. It's by Reader's Digest. Well, I've been reading in here. And it says that a lot of people that think they're gluten-free are not really gluten-free. It's because their gut is in bad shape because of their prior diet, the way they eat, their eating habits. So therefore, they, they think they're gluten-free because it makes them feel better or whatever when they go gluten-free, when in fact, it's the fact that they have an unhealthy gut. Well, anyway, you learn a lot when you read these books. Um, and, you know, everybody has their opinions. And, but I'm not going to lie. Y'all know I stay constipated all the time. I'm just going to be real this morning. I mean, I stay constipated so bad that I have the hardest time going to the bathroom. And most of the time, and I'm not kidding, I have to do an enema just to get started many times. Y'all, I've been going to the bathroom regular 
since I've been eating the fruits and vegetables that I'm supposed to. And I have not cut out anything in my diet. I really haven't as far as carbs or I'm not eating as many carbs, but I still can have a piece of bread or a piece of toast or some pasta. You know, I didn't have to completely cut them out. Um, but yesterday, I noticed that my belly seemed a little bit smaller. When I put on my shirt this morning, the reason I told y'all I was going on this diet, I don't want to be skinny by any means. I don't think a woman looks good skinny at our age because then all of her wrinkles look more defined. I would just like to be about 190 pounds and make me happy, you know. So if I could just get an extra large and not have to be in the plus sizes, I would be very happy. Um, but this shirt, and y'all can tell, but this shirt had gotten tight on my stomach. So in a 2X shirt, it was tight on my belly because most of my weight I do carry in my belly. I have a really big belly. Like a lot of y'all don't think I look that big because on my sides I don't. But you pull this tight. And let me stand, and you can see that a lot of my weight's here. And that's how Daddy's built. Um, just like that. It's so funny because neither one of my girls are built like me. They're built. May carries, everybody's body's different. May carries all of her weight in her legs, the tops of her legs, and around her midriff. And she has like these big love handles if she gains any weight. And then Amy has this huge breast. A little bitty butt and carries a lot of her weight not just in her belly like I do but underneath and you know what I'm talking about everybody's body is made different and everybody carries their weight different some people if they gain a little bit of weight get weight all in their face and they get like a double chin and then some people can be a 2x like me and not even have a hardly have a double chin which is, I mean, it's just the difference in people and the way God made us. But anyway, I am um, going to the bathroom, y'all. I am going to the bathroom without help. I am, y'all don't know how happy that makes me. I know that sounds goofy, but just to be able to go to the bathroom makes me happy. And it makes me all right, if you had told me several weeks ago that if I would just eat more fruits and vegetables, I could go to the bathroom, I'd have told you you were crazy. Okay, I just just said, well, you're nuts. That ain't got nothing to do with it. I have irritable bowel syndrome, and that's how I'm made. That's what I would have told you, because I do have irritable bowel syndrome. But y'all, it's doing good with my, my gut. I think my gut's getting healthier. Anyway, I know... Um, I'm probably talking too much, and some of y'all don't want to hear it because you don't want to go on a diet. You don't want to hear how good I'm doing, but just be happy for me because I don't care if you're going on a diet or not, but I just want to get out of my exercises. That's it. I want to be a nice, plump lady, but not so plump that I can't even get in my 2X shirts anymore because that's where I was. I really literally was having a hard time fitting in some of my 2X shirts. And it ain't because I got big boobs by no means. <laughs> it was all of my stomach. Anyway, um, I'm super excited today. And I know y'all probably seen my rant yesterday li uh, live on Facebook. And I know I'm a Christian woman and I shouldn't rant. And, and, but you know what? For the most part, I got some good feedback. Um, we only had a few people that said I was rude and, you know what? So what? You know, we are rude sometimes and we're not perfect and we're people. And just because we're um, the difference in a YouTuber and a Facebooker and somebody that's an actor and actress on TV is the fact that we're real and you're going to see our real emotion. We're not actors. OK, so if I was an actress, I would just show you. Uh, me being in a good mood all the time and nothing ever bothered me and but I'm not an actress okay so that's just it I, I reached into that refrigerator and I knew I was I really wanted to show y'all what I was eating and I knew the minute I pulled out that spread I was going to hear it from everybody and uh it just kind of aggravated me so I 
it, I expressed my opinions. Um, anyway, uh, I hope you're having a good day. I sure am already when I got up. Um, but anyway, I put the link for this book. This is some really good reading. It really is. It talks about from A to Z, all the foods that you eat, what kind of vitamins are in them, why they're good for you, why they're not good for you, even the vegetables. It'll tell you the benefits, and then it will also tell you whether or not they might be bad for arthritis or different conditions in your body. Um, and I'll give you an example, okay? For example, um, I mean, it goes through everything. Everything you could think of, there's acne, and what's good for acne and what's not good for acne and the aging diet and alcoholism and allergic reactions to foods and alzheimer's disease and anemia but then it, it also talks about apples it says the benefits of an apple it's low in calories it's high in soluble fiber and it helps lower cholesterol the drawbacks rel relatively low in nutrients and may contain pesticide residues. And what I like about this book, it's not like talking to somebody who is just totally against everything. Like people look at something like that and they'll go, oh, I can't eat an apple because it might have pesticides on it. That's not true. Uh, you can fix the apple so you can eat it. You know what I mean? So you don't have to go from one extreme to the other extreme and what i like about this book is it gives you those things but then it tells you what you can do about it and why you should eat it anyway or why you should not eat it and why if you've got let's say diabetes it's good for you but if you've got another condition it may not be good for you and it covers all of that i absolutely love this book so i've been reading it a lot i got me a new um light that is above my recliner and I may share it with y'all too. I love it. It's a lamp and it, it it sits on a base and it comes up and over my recliner. So when I go to read, I turn it on and boy, can I see better in it. And I'm finding myself reading more with that lamp on. Uh, so I, I look at that book every night and of course I'm still in the A's, I think. I don't even think I've gotten out of the A's. I think I'm on asparagus. Um, because it's, it, it talks about every condition that's an A and every food that's an A. It's a really good book. So anyway, with that said, that's my show and tell for the day. And there's a link. You can get them in paperback and get them on Kindle. You can get them on hardback, however you want to do it through Amazon. And um, you can read along with me and learn about all the foods and all the elements. I have plenty of them. All right, my neck. Y'all are not going to believe this. I may just talk all morning. It may just be a chat session. I don't know. But my neck, a lot happened yesterday. My neck, I was so disappointed. You know, I waited on that doctor to come back in the clear because when I went there in, see, I had a procedure in January. I had a procedure in March. I went in in April for them to schedule the real deal. At that time, we learned that his office was closing. Well, they told all the patients to wait in limbo until the office opens back up under a new company name. I did that. I went in to the doctor. Y'all know I did a few weeks, uh, a few couple of weeks ago. And I thought they were going to schedule my procedure. And they said, oh, everything's ready. We just got to get insurance approval. So I go in. No. So I said, okay. I, I called two days in a row. I finally got a hold of somebody. And now she says that she can't schedule the procedure because they're waiting on the medication that would put me to sleep. Now, Apparently, they've been waiting on it for a very long time, and she has a lot of people on the waiting list. Y'all, I have waited for my neck to be better. It has been like this in bad condition since we moved here, and I went through the move, and I don't know if I heard it more by driving back and forth and lifting things or what I did to it. All I know is 
I can't even watch my birds and be comfortable and I'm tired of it. And I called them and now they've put me off again. It's going to be nine to 10 days before they can even get the medicine. So they can't schedule anything. They can't put me on the schedule until they get their medicine. What it amounts to is they don't know if they're going to get that medicine or not. I don't think they're really in the clear yet because when I call the insurance company, they have not even sent in a prior approval for it. They have not. So I'm getting on the horn this morning and I'm finding me another doctor. I have had it up to here. <laughs> I am tired of waiting for my neck to be better. Uh, so I am calling another doctor today. So pray that I find a good doctor and that I can get this done. She says because I had the two prior um, procedures, I shouldn't have to do them again. Y'all, they're very unpleasant, so I'm hoping I won't. But with that said, I've got to get on the horn today and i got to make a couple of doctor's appointments. And so I thank y'all for being patient with me today. I've been a talker today for sure. But uh, I told Chris yesterday, I said, I begin to think the Lord don't want me to have that... Uh, procedure with that doctor because look at what all's happened. I said, is he going to have to slap me in the face before I get the point? I said, I think I'm calling another doctor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even my appointment when I went in the last time was chaotic and it took him forever. And I mean, it was just nuts. And so I am finding somebody today, hopefully. Y'all pray that I find the right doctor. Um, because I really need it done. And they have to go through the spine. It has to be an anesthesiologist. So it is a pretty, you know, I mean, they could really mess up and mess you up. So you need somebody that's good. Um, they go in and they do some kind of nerve. They, they burn the ends of the nerve ending so that you can't feel the pain anymore. It's there, but you can't feel it. So I've got four discs that are bad in my neck. And... It really masks it. It doesn't really help it or cure it. It just masks it. And I don't even know how wise that is. But anyway, we'll quit talking about me. I've talked about me all morning. Y'all ready to talk about Jesus? <laughs> He's much more pleasant. Um, it is a very good Bible study, and it's good because we talked about yesterday death and how we didn't have to fear death and what a wonderful thing. A wonderful condition it is to be dead when you're in Jesus. Um, and I know that sounds crazy to the world, but it doesn't sound crazy to the Christian. And um, a lot, I had several questions yesterday. What about cremation? What about it? What about it? I am going to be cremated. And my daddy says that's not a Christian burial. You know what I say? I'm a Christian. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing good about my flesh. Absolutely nothing. Everything that's good inside of me is the Holy Spirit and God. So if I burn up my flesh with cremation, who cares? It deserves it anyway. It's full of sin. That's my take on cremation. That's where I stand with cremation. I'm not scared to be burned up. I'm not scared anything's going to happen to me if my body's burned. For heaven's sakes, people die. They get ate by alligators. They get ate by sharks. They drowned in the sea. They uh, die in an explosion and their body's blown to bits. Uh, I mean, there's tons of ways that people die where their body isn't buried and doesn't mean a thing. That's another one of those things that I've been trying to show y'all and everybody else that it ain't got nothing to do with us. It ain't got nothing to do with us. It ain't got nothing to do with our body. It's all about Jesus Christ. If he can create the world, create everything you're looking at that we've Created with the things he gave us to create it with. I mean, just look at a bird and watch it and think, God created that. God created you and me. He created our skin so that if we get a scratch, it gets a scab on it and it heals. He created us so that we could have surgery and then sew us back up and us heal. Do you know how crazy wonderful that is? Do you believe in God or not? Do you believe he is who he says he is? 
or not? Then why would you be scared of cremation? Why would you think that you could do anything that would hurt your salvation? Because it ain't got anything to do with you, us, this life, anything about us, what we do, how we do it. It's all about him. It's all about Jesus Christ. So, yeah, sure. I think cremation is wonderful because you're not in the earth for everybody to, and I know everybody's different, but I, I just, I just like it. That's, that's for me. And Chris is opposite. He wants to be buried and that's for him. You know what? One way is not any more right than the other way as far as how you feel about it. But either way, it's not going to affect your salvation. Does that make sense? It's more of a choice individually we make. Not got anything to do with we shouldn't make the decision because we think uh, something bad's going to happen to us because we did it. I mean, that's crazy. I, I'm not trying to tell you you're crazy. I'm just trying to say that it's out of your hands. Salvation is. So you decide what's best for you. I don't personally want my children to come see me at the grave. I just don't. Now, many people get comforted by that. They're comforted by going to the grave. They're comforted by having a place to see uh, their loved one. Um, but if my kids want to see me, they can just look on the mantle or um, whatever, you know, because in reality, we're not in the grave anyway. Praise God, right? We're not in the grave. Um, I talk to my mama all the time. All the time. I don't have to be at the gravesite to talk to my mama. But for some people, that's important to them. Um, and you know, that's what is most important. What makes you comfortable is what you should do. Not because somebody else does it. I'm going to do that because that's why it's always been done. Or I'm going to do that because that's what mom and daddy are doing. It's more about what makes you happy when it comes to that. And see, that's one reason May wants to work in um, a funeral home. May has got the sweetest. If you just ever met my May, she is all about making people comfortable with death. And helping them to, I don't know, the reason she wants to do it is not to make money and not because she thinks it's cool to embalm people or cremate people. It's all about, she wants to do it because of the families and her care for the families. And she told me, the other day she said, Mama, everybody grieves different. Everybody wants different things when they pass away. And so many people aren't prepared. And that's what I want to do is comfort the family. So um, I'm excited because I asked her when she was here the last time she was home, May, are you really happy in your new school? Because Amy's changing her major. And May did change her major to this. And, I, and she says, yes, Mama, this is where I, where I really want to be. And I said, okay. But Amy has decided to go into psychology um, instead of doing radiation therapy. Um, and I don't care what my kids do. They could, be, they could work in a daycare, keeping two-year-olds. I mean, they could, I mean, whatever makes them happy is what I want them to do. I don't want them to. I do worry a little bit about my Amy because she spends money like it grows on trees. And so I think she needs a good profession. And I think she needs, I'm, I'm just being real, I think she needs to marry a rich man. <laughs> Whoa, does she? Um, but other than that, I don't care what they do. Does that make sense? I don't worry about May because she's really frugal. And she just don't spend a lot of money. And she saves her money. And uh, she's just a lot different than Amy is. Um, anyway, I'm going to read through Bible study real quick. Um, I did copy and paste it at the top of the post. I copied and pasted a link to the book that I'm reading, if you're interested. Um, and we're going to read through this, and then I'm going to go, because I could talk all day. I'm in one of those moods today. Can you tell? 
I am in one of those moods to talk to my friends today. Um, let me open this up. And this is good after we... We've talked about what we have today. It says, and the glory which thou gavest me, I've given them. Now, this is coming out of John chapter 17, verse 22. And this is where Jesus, I'm going to click on this because this is really good to know. Um, but just a second, I lost my place. And don't hang up just because I start Bible study, please. You know what? I'm the person I am because of Jesus Christ. I'm happy in the Lord. And if you want to be happy in the Lord, uh, make him a part of your life. It makes a big, big difference. Uh, this is coming out of John. Wonderful, wonderful book in the Bible. Um, very encouraging to the believer. Uh, helps you know whether or not you're saved. Uh, I do refer a lot of people there if they're having a hard time understanding whether or not they're saved or they don't feel right. I say read the book of John and not first John, the book of John. Well, this is um, titled the, their future glory and it's talking about us as the believer. And listen to this. It's just beautiful. Now, this is the scripture. And then I'll read the, uh, I wanted to just read a couple of it, uh, of the scripture because it is such a beautiful picture of what Jesus Christ asked his father to do for us, the believer. It's amazing. It says, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. This is Jesus talking to his father. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. So he's saying, Daddy, you know the glory that you've given me? I want my disciples, my followers, my believers to have that glory, that they could be one, just like me and you are one. Isn't that amazing? It says, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou has loved me. So Jesus is saying, and I want this to happen so that the world, the world, y'all, that we live in, that is, we've studied over the last few days, controlled by the devil. It is his place, not the place of God. He wants the world to see us, Christians, as one. Do they really see that in us? Or do we bicker and strive? And, and me and Chris were riding down the road the other day, and, you know, we're going to visit churches. And he goes, you know, it's really ridiculous that we have this many churches. Because you know why we have that many churches? Because people can't get along. And because people want to go here and there and split off and do this and split off and do that. And they don't want to be unified. Do you know what a church could do if it was unified? Do you know what the churches in your town could do if they united as one? A lot, a lot, but instead they're jealous of one another and uh, envy one another. And that's sin. It's crazy how it works. Now, I'm not saying all the churches are bad. I'm just saying this is what Jesus wanted. He wanted us to be one. Are we really one in him? I would say majority, no, we're not. It says, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. Now, listen to this. That they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. So he not only says that he wants the world to know us as one, he says, Daddy, I want them to be where I'm at. I want them to see the glory. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. So this is telling, he's telling his daddy, he wants us to be in glory with him. He wants us to be in heaven. Isn't that amazing that Jesus Christ would do that? That he would love us that much? 
It is. It's amazing. So this is what Charles Spurgeon has to say. He says, Behold the excellent kindness of the Lord Jesus, for he has given us his all. Although a tithe of his possessions would have made a universe of angels rich beyond all thought, he was not content until he had given us all that he had. It would have been surprising grace if he had allowed us to eat the crumbs of his bounty beneath the table of his mercy. But he will do nothing by half, halves. He makes us sit with him and share the feast. What about that, y'all? He had given us some small pension. Oh, had he given us some small pension from his royal treasure chest, we should have a cause to love him eternally. But no, he will have his bride as rich as himself. And he will not have a glory or a grace in which she shall not share. He has not been content with less than making us joint heirs with himself. So that we may have equal possessions. Y'all, if this don't fire you up and get you excited... I don't know what will, because I mean, when I read this and I think about what he has done for us and how much he loves us, what a beautiful Savior we have. What a beautiful place that we have looked forward to, we, we have to look forward to in glory. He has emptied all his estate into the money box of the church and has all things common with his redeemed. Jesus Christ gave the church everything. So it's up to us to make sure the church is his bride and we're united as one. Now, I say that about churches for you not to go to church because you need to go to church. It's good for you to go to church. Churches do good things and it helps the world see Christ. What would it be like if we didn't have the church in the world period? Don't you think because we have the church? It helps the world see Christ. I do. And Jesus Christ died for it. So it's very important that we're a part of a church. It says he will withhold from his people. He will not hold. He will withhold from his people um, even not one key to any room in his house. He gives them full liberty to take all that he has to be their own. He loves them to make free with his treasure and have as much as they can possibly carry. The boundless fullness of his all-sufficiency is as free to the believer as the air that he breathes. So he's, he's saying that all of this Jesus has provided free, just like he provides us the air to breathe free. Praise the Lord for that, right? Christ has put the cup of his love and grace to the believer's lip and bidden him to drink on it forever. For could he drain it, he is welcome to do so, as he cannot exhaust it. He is bidden to drink abundantly, for it is all his own. What truer proof of fellowship can heaven and earth afford? And this is a little quote. It says, when I stand before the throne, dressed in beauty, not my own, when I see thee as thou art, love thee with unsinning heart, then, Lord, shall I fully know, not till then, how much I owe. Isn't that pretty? So take the time out today and read through that lesson. I, I think I messed up on one little portion where I uh, edited it. I'll fix it right quick, and then I'll repaste it in there for you. But uh, take a look at it today and think about, what a wonderful, wonderful, amazing God we serve and how we are all one in Jesus Christ, that he asked that of his Father for us. Um, he's an amazing Savior, an amazing Savior, something we should really get excited over and not be so uh, gloom and doom, right? Because he has provided so much free for us. But he sure had to pay for it, didn't he, on that cross? So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, and um, 
I only had a couple of prayer requests, so I'll post them on there today for you guys so that you can take a look. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, and we thank you for Jesus Christ. Lord, to read how he personally asked these things um, for us so that we could be as one with him, so we could see his glory, so we could actually not only see his glory, but live with him in glory is a miracle in itself, something that is truly out of this world and in a spiritual realm that only the Christian and believer can comprehend and we thank you so much for it we thank you for this free gift of grace free to us but really not free to jesus christ uh, but we thank you for it we thank you for being here with us today um, we thank you for um, putting a hedge around us and keeping us safe from um the things of the world and be with our families and friends and children and um, in Christ's name we pray and be with those that are on a uh, have special needs Lord that are listening you know their needs whether they ask for prayer or not and uh, we just thank you for all you are the God that you are in Christ's name we pray amen y'all have a wonderful and blessed day and thanks for sticking around right I've talked forever. Love you. Bye.